let's keep looking around. Maybe up here? There's probably nothing. Oh yeah, these guys are the deputies. Okay, let's blind them. Blind them and run. get a couple more enemies, that would be nice. There's a police car. Okay, I got a couple more flashbangs in here. Oh, another guy. Where did you come from? Let's hope I'm not missing any pages. I doubt there are pages in places where I need to run for my life. At least I hope there aren't. There's something here. Ah, it's the radio station. Already? Okay, flashbang. Ooh, that hurts. Oh, come on, this guy lived? Seriously? God damn it. Keep on running. I mean, there were some other enemies around, so when will they appear? There's the first police car. Well, let's just continue running. Uh, that way. Let's try not to die this time. Still a long walk from the checkpoint to the radio station. Okay. That guy's still alive. Here's another one. There he goes. Let's not make the same mistake twice. I hope Maine could lend me a car to get to the coal mine. Let's see. Anything here new? I guess we can only head inside. Normal citizens instead of wasting resources on those people. Well, let the trash sort themselves out. I'm sorry, but my granddaddy settled in Bright Falls in 1911. Well, thank you very much for that uh, compassionate viewpoint, Lorna. Oh, here's a little surprise. The famous uh -oh. writer Alan Wake just walked in. Let's hope the cops are not listening to the radio. 
Come on in, Mr. Wake. Oh, I'm so glad you could find the time to do this, Mr. Wake. Nowhere to run now, Dan Brown. You back away from me. Don't hurt. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Everyone calm down. Put the gun down. We're all friends here, right? Cool your jets, Nightingale. We got him. Judas Priest. What the hell's the matter with you? There's a civilian in there. Even if it kills me, you hear me? You hear me, H.P. Lovecraft? I had fallen off so many cliffs, it was ridiculous. That's what you get for naming a book the sudden stop. It was probably good I hadn't had the chance to tell Maine where I was going. I'd have to lose the cops and find my own way to the mine. I have this one too. Yeah, let's just pick up pages as we go. I'll check them all later. Nightingale stared through the broken studio window into the dark woods. He turned around, started to walk out, but Maine grabbed his arm. Young man, you almost shot me. You don't shoot off rounds at people like that. What's the matter with you? Nightingale shook his arm free, marched out. His cheeks burned with rage and humiliation. That Nightingale guy sure is crazy. Oh, flares. So now we have flares and flashbangs. No gun. Okay, let's keep them back with the flare. Let's get this generator going. Ah, a revolver, finally. Okay, we're now armed. There's another flare. Danny had stepped out, but what stumbled back in was something else. Something alien. A monster. Walter tried to kill it, first with his fists, then a chair. It wouldn't die. Instead, it kept coming, unaffected by the beating it had taken. After Walter managed to kick it down the cellar stairs, fear took over. He ran, got behind the wheel, gunned the engine. The booze wouldn't make him forget, but he knew he had to try. Let's go. Go, go, go. There's something else we can activate. 
Time for flashbangs. There was no sensible reason for the lines to be here. It was almost as if they'd been left for someone like me to use. Got some more supplies. Be something over that path. The darkness controls the take. Shotgun. Throw one more out there. And they just keep coming. Did we get them all? Yeah, I think we did. Let's activate these two. Just in case. Batteries and ammo. Can I activate this one? I guess they turn off after a while. Let's see, can I get up that cabin? Maybe? Come on. Something like this. Let's see if there's anything up there. I doubt it, but... Yeah, there's nothing. Okay, so we need to go that way. So let's go this way first. Because I see something over there. And that's a page. Bulldozer's engine roared to life. Mud and rocks flew as it fought for traction. It crashed the concrete wall and landed heavily in the yard. If it were an animal, it would have shaken its head after the impact, fixed its eyes on me, and charged. Of course, it had no head, nor eyes. Shadows crawled on its form, twisting it into a monster. Then, it came for me. Let's continue towards the checkpoint. Reach the train depot. Anything in here? No. Okay, things are getting scary now. There's a light right there. And a page. Sarah trusted her gut, and her gut said Agent Nightingale was an asshole. He felt wrong, and it wasn't just the smell of stale booze. It was in the way he flashed his badge, pulled rank, the look in his eyes when he wanted answers. Where was Alan Wake? What was this about an accident? Where was his wife? And most importantly, why did she let Wake go? He wouldn't answer her questions. Federal business was all he'd say. There's a train. Got some supplies. Hello? The most stubborn man I've ever met. Alice? Alice? Alan. Alan. I'm so afraid. It keeps me in the dark. Please help me. I look at you, Alan, and it's not you. Something else. Looking out from behind your eyes. Alice, I'm here. I'm so alone here. It's all gonna go to hell. You need to be careful. Cooperate. The connection had been terrible, but that wasn't the only thing that hadn't been right with the call. She sounded wrong somehow, but she had called me. 
And another page. The pipe wrenched itself loose from the bridge's steel framework. Wrapped in darkness, it floated in midair, twitching. For a moment, I didn't understand what I was looking at. The heavy object lurched at me with impossible force. I threw myself out of the way, but just barely. When I turned my flashlight on it, it shook in a dark rage before it flew at me again. Let's head up here first. Seems to be something over there. 